have not been able to see it again after the fire, in fact. It's too cruel. But I'll do it for you. So, let's go. This story starts with an error. In six short hours on Saturday night in early September 2018, flames consumed the biggest collection of Brazilian history. Of course, I want to tell everything, but the question is, when is the appropriate time to release all the information? A lobotomy in Brazilian memory. An image of a nation, its lands and its cultures. The immense encyclopedic collection included priceless archives of free Colombian and Indo-American cultures. The oldest human remains ever found in Brazil and audio recordings of indigenous languages, many of which are no longer spoken. Also, five million butterflies and under arthropods, a 1200 years old fossil human remains, thousands of indigenous ceramics, and a fresco from Pompeii. A meteorite that hit Earth in 1784 survived the fire, no problem. Pedra de Bendego traveled from space to Brazilian soil of Bahia and rests still on the ground for several thousand years. An irregular mass, 5,360 kilo kilograms of iron covered by four inch layer of oxidation with numerous depressions on the surface and cylinder-like holes oriented parallel to its greater length. Part of its lower portion was lost during landing and left a smooth surface of, on one face. Beside iron, it also consists nickel, cobalt, phosphorus, and traces of sulfur and carbon in much smaller quantities, only measured in parts by million. Ever since it came in contact with the human eye, the iron been on the move again. The boy, Domingo de Mota Betelo, grazed cattle on the farm near the present, ta present town of Monte Santo when he first spotted it. The year was 1784. Given the slow local movement of people and commerce, the news of the finding spread quickly. In 1785, Governor D. Rodriguez Menzese arranged for it to be transported to Salvador. However, the meteorite's excessive weight made transportation difficult. The cart it was on lost control and the meteorite fell into a dry st steam bed only 180 meters away from the spot it was originally found. The meteorite did not travel with the people, but the people started to visit Bendego. The Royal Society published drawing of it in its periodical, and the first reproduction of the metal rock started to orbit the visual sphere. You can buy a copy in 14 pounds 99. The year was 1818. 70 years later, it was lifted and rolled to the National Museum and stopped right by the door. First room, passed by the armed personnel and metal turnstiles. It was resting on the National Brazilian pedestal for 130 years. Always first to view. 
the first image to take. Then the fire happened. No major damage. Stilled. First room behind the metal turnstiles, all covered with ashes from burnt neighboring objects. Images were uploaded and downloaded. Links were shared. Posts were posted. Pictures transmitted up toward space and fell down toward Brazilian air. What are the means which the earth sees? After the ashes and images rested, I clicked on the link and enter the museum again. There, there, click, no, 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 to the left or to the right. I passed by the two blurred faced armed personnel and glided through the metal turnstiles. On my way to the staircase, I dragged my cursor around and above Bendigo, smearing glitches and depressions and cylinder shaped holes, forming geo digital irregular mass of image matter. One would hope that contemporary technology would offer the most treasured artifact a better chance of survivor than the Library of Alexandria. It feels almost unimaginable that so many valuable objects were simply wiped off the face of the earth without leaving any digital trace. At the age of algorithmic reproduction, when automatic backup is the default standard, too often we need to fight for the right to be forgotten. But the economy of remembering everything is still entangled with the geography of the right to be remembered. But you see, this storage space was leaking for a while now. Over 90% of the national collection was simply lost because there was not enough water in the fire hydrant to extinguish the blaze. An error, a break within an ordered world. For some time now, the pressure in the fire hydrants was too low, but the high pressure of real estate and industry developers didn't stop pumping, bringing the system to the brink of collapse. This is a dry season for fire hydrants and water pumps and local reservoirs and natural watersheds. For some time now, bodies of water are slowly dehydrating under official priorities. For modern water, dry became a condition. This was an old building, an old building with all sorts of old lives and no liquid assets. The city was busy building a brand new museum of tomorrow. It was a question of liquidity. Fire was the method. A fragmented and eclectic digital collection survived from the ruins. Images available on Wikimedia Commons, all taken by small interest groups and visitors who captures highlights from the collection that are now sorted on their personal devices or cloud services and shared via social media. The images became a portal to much other data they have been slowly aggregating. Other images they saw location they checked at, in at, a personal library organized by geolocation or facial recognition software, social networks and other data points. 
the images are partial, they are anecdotal, they are broken, but also very much connected. Each image named after its contributor. One named malsexshells.jpg, the other Sophia and Dino 11. The primary school age Sophia and her purple stuffed monkey with long arms are now main protagonist of the National Brazilian Collection with few dozen images named after her. A new princess in what once was a palace, then a museum, and now a site of collective witnessing of things being left as acknowledged in the unacknowledged. There is also a virtual tour product by Google, of Google Art and Culture, when one can easily visit the no longer existing museum. No more boxes and cabinets. Museum information is now stored through the same technology of your streets. Long ago, collection have become a toxic warehouses for genocidal practices and histories of colonial dispossessions and erasures, where objects and bodies are the storage spaces for transgenerational trauma. Cabinets burned in the fire and melted into wiki stockrooms for digital recollection or used by Google for data correlation. Storages are the new species of spaces. Through Rio de Janeiro's night sky, ashes flew up to the air and fell on the ground. Burnt anthropoids and ancient, ancient cockroaches dropped in backyards. Employee surveys and rejected papers fell quiet, quietly on stoops and balconies, like foliage leaves. Index cards landed on the neighbor's front porch. Burned particles from another life took local flights and touched down much closer to home. Asher, ashes scattered and spread out the words like silent witnesses carrying, carried by the whispering wind. The first edit on Portuguese Wikimedia was made by an anonymous user at 8.40 p.m. on the night of September 2nd, minutes after the report on TV began. An hour and a half later, an entry dedicated to the fire itself was created. In the following hours, the collection's Wikipedia page was once, that was once updated by dedicated contributors started to circulate globally. Here is a stray cat purring, purring between two columns with peeling paints. There, a photo of indigenous hunter, the very low angled photo clearly taken by a child exposes a leak in the upper corner that was fixed with layer of brown packing tape. The museum loans in the winter, the same loans in the summer, and multiple copies of the same shot that was never deleted offering a generational personal testimony against institutional trauma. Pedro Luis loved ashes, ashes and sarcophagi. I repeat, Pedro Luis loves ashes and sarcophagi. Ashes are the best storytellers and sarcophagi 
are the best mystery form. An expert of Egyptian monuments, he was brushing dust for a living, if you can call it a living. His work at the National Museum was like living in a giant Russian doll-shaped sarcophagus, a memory chamber of all sorts of things that once called life are now kept in jars and glass cases, registrar form and long list, catalogs and exhibition shots and copies, many photocopies. All slides, also slides and films, tapes and floppy disks, CD-ROMs and memory sticks that sometimes remind him of sculptors. Moving between rooms and boxes, he imagines his workplace is giant beast fed by dead life forms and memory forms. Each has a copy, a metabolic loop. But for Pedro, death is where life is. So life was good. For a time now, Pedro is using his toolkit to excavate his own workplace. Coffins and amulet staples and line levels and skater like memory sticks. New ashes consume the old ashes. New death consume all death. The matter that recorded the evidence of violence is devoured by its own materiality. Necrometabolism. Pedro brushes and measures and measures and put them in boxes. He thinks of the Sonoma people who live in the Yano, Yanomami land, who destroy the marks of the dead by consuming their own corporality. The meticulous practice of remembering to forget include drinking the liquids that came out of the deceased pulverizing their bones, consuming the ashes, and eating the rest mixed with banana porridge. The dead have the right to be forgotten. Their own deeds forget them. Their own life erased. Their belonging must be burned. The metabolic system is a hell of a mnemonic device. Pedro stuck boxes in rooms. Colleague, tell, tell Pedro. The original pieces that were here are part of our conquest through the struggle of our loved ones who are not here. Now we have memories more than we have lives because they are live for us. And Pedro thinks of living and doing and thinking with them, with us, dead or alive. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Ofri, hey. hello, thank you so much. So just uh, for the sake of it, I am Miguel Amado, I'm director of Sirius Art Center and I am based in Cork City, Ireland, and you are? I'm Ofri Knani, I'm an artist, I'm uh, based in London. So Ofri, um, we have uh, just seen a lecture performance based on your current research and work, the title of which is Leaking Lands. Could you elaborate on the title, please? Um, yeah, so um, as, uh, as the performance suggests, I, um, I'm looking at um, a, an event that happened three years ago when a national museum um, was burned um, and almost nothing survived digitally. And I'm looking at those residues, which I think is an active residues of matter and body and, and data and the way they intermingle and kind of purport maybe propose a new 
stay to that is after the museum and and so the the lands here the, the element of leaking is i think pretty self explanatory and the land here is definitely first the concept of nationality that was made and formed through practices of colonialism by uh, grouping and retelling the histories of uh, and, co and connecting the histories of many lands and many cultures, um, but also this seemingly stable land of the uh, format or concept of museum that being kind of shaken and and leaked and and asking to be reconsidered. I think through this series of events. It's quite interesting what you just said about the connection between the museum as an institution and the formation of nationality or identity with respect to, um, say, legacy, practices of colonization and legacies of colonialism. The museum to which you refer is the National Museum of Brazil mm -hmm. in Rio de Janeiro, mm -hmm. and uh, which indeed burned a few years ago and somehow was the repository of a series of objects um, that translate culture um, that somehow shaped the history of Brazil, mm -hmm. but uh, by doing that contributed to the construction of the identity of a supposed national identity of Brazil against the colonizing power, which was Portugal. Mm -hmm. um, and somehow the burning down of the museum seems to um, put that into, into question. Although the object that you are initially focusing on, the meteorite, is one of the few objects, if not only the only one, who survived the fire. Yeah. So, and it's quite interesting that in your narrative, but even in the pedestal where the meteorite has been living mm -hmm. since it was brought to the museum, there is the caption in the pedestal, which uh, for those who read Portuguese, somehow articulates the narrative, the meteorite land somewhere in the landscape, in a particular area of Brazil, starts to belong to nature or yeah. to being nationalized to the people who encounter it, and there, there is an interesting idea of encountering something that comes from outer space, as much as the Portuguese encounter the people, the indigenous population of, of what is now Brazil, mm -hmm. and then at some point that meteorite and that encounter of say civilizations, humans and non-humans, and so on. Mm -hmm is brought to the museum and then starts to perform another, another role and in, including the, the, the sort of the introduction uh, to those who visit the museum because it's placed at, at, at really at the core, at the entrance, almost as like the icon of the collection. And, and so, though, so that's very metaphorical there, this idea of appropriating what exists in, in the world or in landscape and encapsulate it um, and then use it to tell a new story. And I was curious about why you are using this meteorite in your um, lecture performance. Uh, is it because it is the, a clear residue of the museum, but also of what is after the museum? Or is there also something more around it, particularly related to the matter that you describe and all this kind of matter and extraction of matter today uh, across the globe, but particularly in the global south, is connected with the algorithm capitalism in which we live. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I think that's your uh, very last, last point is actually, because it starts with the meteorite, but then it moves to the water and then to the ashes. Um, and it's part of um, a, a kind of a longer piece of uh, writing that um, try to tell the stories through testimonies of things. So it actually moved from deep matter like meteorites to the story of, um, of the water, which, you know, kind of play with um, uh, capitalization of, of um, natural material, especially in the, in the, um, in the global south and then how the kind of the museum being short of liquidity um, and as i proposed there for modern water and capital and for modern dry became a condition so it's it moves from from the object of the deep you know of of 
of the matter of the iron to the water to the ashes as condition and then uh, later on in my uh, in the writing it's not uh, yet in the lecture performance it moved to skins and and a very interesting way that you know uh, from one skins that in the museum um, found in different places been nationalized but then a whole uh, social and social media phenomenon that people started to ink the museum on their own skin and it's, the title is museum on my skin um, which will bring me back to your and then it goes to jpeg and cursor so it moved from deep matter to kind of embodiment and then to digital, um, I don't know, signs and, 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 and presence or uh, um, uh, digital units. Um, so, so, so that's kind of one shift. And as I mentioned before, I, I try to think about the residues as a place that matter, data, and and um, and body and embodiments and uh, kind of melt together um, in a in a state that is refused the canonical order of of uh, colonialism, but that is being you know um, lived through the the idea of a collection and national collection. And how can we think with them in a way of um, you know, in, in, in a productive way, but uh, actually, the I just want through the museum of the skin to co to connect to something you, you said earlier in your in your uh, kind of question, which is um, the project of the National Museum in Brazil play multiple roles. The one the, it first it started as a as a palace, right? As a Portuguese palace, and many of the objects were given to um you know to to the to the king but then uh, it became a form of nationalization and kind of refusal but in in a very interesting way when the museum uh, was burnt a lot of indigenous activists were um titling or describing the event as um, a second gen genocide because at the end of the day that a lot of the history you know the the material history and the archive was um, was housed within this museum and it became a space for people to come and look for ancestors and to conduct the research and once again um, new condition of governmentality and 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 you know kind of very ruthless capitalism that we know today in brazil um you know put an end a very tragic end to this kind of new way of re revisiting the material it, it's just important for me to say you can hear from my accent is um you know, English is not my native language, but I'm also not Brazilian. Um, and it is very important for me to say that this research of mine doesn't take any, you know, I don't have any geographical or historical proximity to the case of Brazil. And I take it um, actually through the interest of kind of a meeting place of my interest that coming from question about museum and algorithmic terms uh, and then national museums and and my work um, in as a performance artist mainly in the setting of museum and I take it as a starting point to a much um, wider question around what I call mode of afterness. Uh, working with those uh, remains or with, the, with those residues and try to think about it not in object form, what was burned, but really in an active form. Um, and how can we think about those kind of leftovers as a space to work and to think with? Um, yeah, and traveling, up, I'm, you know, I'm very cautious not to make any claim about the culture that I'm, you know, I am a is distanced for me so yes but it's interesting no i think actually you know the entry point that you are using is totally acceptable um and it was very clear even when you start speaking to me that you didn't mention specifically brazil or rio de janeiro it's uh, we are using you we you are using i it seems to me this event as a sort of um a, a, an archetypal event with yeah. respect to the history of museums as an institution, the um, the, con the political conditions of the of present times in which uh, there is a clear, particularly in some countries like Brazil, 
there is a clear divorce between elites and power and uh, in indigenous cultures and the, the claim of indigenous people to their lands and to their uh, rights, let's say. Um, but on the other hand, it's also the entry point through algorithm capitalism, if we want to call this way. And I would like to now just focus a little bit on that through the lenses of Sophia, the girl that you mentioned in your lecture performance, who became a sort of an, a, an example of those who are enabling a sort of rebuilding digitally or in the virtual world of the collection or of the idea of what the museum is through the photographs that they took and or, and or, they, and or they uploaded online uh, in various forms of the of the works that they and the objects and the items that they saw. So maybe we, we could maybe could you elaborate a little bit on that element of your research and of this particular sure. lecture? Um, so um, I'm I'm in my research kind of looking at there are three major um, I mean they're all minor but there are three. Uh, things that remain because the collection was not digitized. And one is, um, as I mentioned, a virtual tour by Google, and one is a really handful of 3D modeling that I've been working with. And one of the most curious um, thing, kind of phenomena, is, as you already mentioned, the night of the fire, there was a call by Wikimedia activists that, that expanded kind of globally for people to contribute their own images. And here we have in this virtual tour versus the, the um, this kind of very interesting collection that people started to, you know, they and people uploaded people uh, like photos that are completely out of focus. Or as we all know, when we go to museum, we take many, many photos of the same objects. So there is an element of repetition. Uh, people were active or very nostalgic. We don't know anything about Sophia, but at the same time, she's kind of a main protagonist of, uh, uh, and it's, it's really beautiful and quite poetic that she's like the most, you know, one of, one of the people and she became uh, in a way that if we'll think about kind of in, you know, um, uh, kind of institutional change, it will take generation to make. But here there was, a, well, it's not only chance, it's chance and, and participation that kind of uh, created an, a museum collection that has nothing with all the systems of order and meanings that we know within institutional, you know, institutions of display, and it's completely user generated. While the other, the virtual tour, which you can visit the museum, um, is completely corporate based initiative, right? It has nothing to do with Brazil. It has nothing to do with the actual museum. It looks exactly the same in the Louvre or or I don't know, Uffizi or in the National, in National Museum. And it doesn't even capture the entire museum. It's only capture what was, you know, the, the doors that were open to, to the um, special camera of Google. I think back to, to Sophia, I found it really kind of amazing how, when I look at those photos about few, few hundreds, maybe a few thousands of photos, there is no way to, to index them. Mm -hmm. How do you index a picture of a girl look, holding a monkey and leaning on a glass that, you know, with like a um, few fossils and, and dinosaur, dinosaur in the background? What is it? It's image of what? And, and there are so many like sometimes photos of uh, dioramas. So it's, it's not that and it's not. And what I, um, so, so each one of those photos are so rich in their poor image way. And they kind of introduce this idea of, I would say uncertain archives, the archives that re in, in their, you know, kind of essence, they refuse to be archived because there is, they represent the impossibility to, to systemize them or to index them or to order them. So yes. they're fleeting every system. So to conclude, um, I, I'm challenging you now to uh, maybe speculate on what you feel is, say, if this 
event represents could represent a sort of like post museum condition in that sense of the blending between history and digital and uh, the creation of an experience through the view, through the through userships, through the lenses of the users or of the creators of the images, mm -hmm. rather than that of the curator and the expertise attached to the curator in creating a narrative, coming up with displays, etc. So, if I could challenge you to speculate on what could be the role of the curator in these circumstances, what would you say? Hmm. I guess the role of the curator will be the role of the collaborator. <laughs> um, there's, um, you know, there's um, a question. We all question this, the space of the expert. And I think um, it's, it's not about the artist who is the expert, the educator, and, and you know it's the same rule for for all of us. And and what I'm very much interested is um, how this kind of new collect new condition of um, of the leftovers represented an, an, a way to think more less of a collection and more as a collective, and how through the way of um, you know the kind of the leftover first. I mean, I won't speak about it too much now, but um, there's never one collection anymore. In the age of kind of a, um, algorithmic capitalism, there's data being collected and aggregated and mixed all the time. So we are always living in a collection of, collect of collection all the time. And there is, I believe, a potentiality for a collectivization collectivization, a, um, a way of working on site with material and online or offline and online and kind of coming together um, more around the question, not of ordering or explaining, but much more around the question of navigating those material um, in a space that uh, really inviting um, kind of speculating, speculative thinking, uh, because material are online and you can, can connect them in different ways. And the role of collectors and and uh, and artists and experts and curators are kind of more in an audience member and Sophia and her monkey is more when you come together even if it's for ad hoc and start to move through those materialities and it's a navigation not toward an object but a navigation without an object okay Ofri, thank you so much for your contribution to um the ICT Congress in 2021. And um, I look forward to seeing you again. Um, and again, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Miguel, for the invitation.